Hi, my name is Zainab Badri. I'm social work intern. Will you please introduce yourself? Uh, I'm Jake. Hi, Jake. I'm Anna. Hi, Anna. Thanks for coming. Uh, before we start the session, I'll just speak to you about the confidentiality. Whatever you say will be between us, unless you mention that you that you'll be harming yourself or someone else. In that case, we need to break the confidentiality. Is it okay? Mm -hmm. And also, I would like to inform you that I'll be taking notes during the session. And if you feel like uh, to just go through, you're most welcome to see at the end of the session. Okay. okay. So just, if you can just let me know what are you doing and a little bit information, then we can go ahead in the session. Oh, I need to schedule the appointment. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I decided to um, schedule an appointment to talk to someone because uh, recently he's brought up uh, the idea <coughs> of a separation or potentially a divorce um, and that was pretty shocking to me so uh, I felt like we needed to do something about that immediately um, yeah so that's why we're here okay and you were not expecting this kind of reaction from your husband no what about you, Jack? I mean, what about me? Yeah, like, what do you have to say? I mean, I'm surprised she doesn't see it coming. Mm -hmm. So, it's been something that's been going on for a while. Um, distant. Okay. So you were expecting her to know that something is not going wrong? Yeah, like I said, it, it seems pretty obvious. You know, she spends more time away. She's not at home as often. We used to cook together, and now it's just me. And then she's partaking, helping to fix up her house, and then it's just me. So it just seems there's clearly something going on. And I'm surprised she doesn't see it. Okay. So you, uh, it's your story that uh, you're more involved into household chores and everything, and you don't see that involvement from her? No, I don't. What do you have to say about that? Um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, so well recently, um, you know, things have just been a lot busier at work. Um, I'm a bank manager and, you know, I've been picking up more tasks and I'm trying to get um, get a raise and, you know, I've just been working really hard with my job, uh, picking up extra tasks, um, spending more time with my bosses and other coworkers to try to learn what they're doing, get involved with that. Um, so, you know, it does, it takes time away from, from being home, but, you know, it's... Well, I mean, you never used to do that. Yeah, but, you know, I just, I've just been, um, you know, putting in a, a lot of effort at work recently. So, I'm hearing a different story from both of you. I think, Jack, you have a story that Anna is not involving into a relationship. Am I right? If I'm wrong, please correct me. Right? That's your story. And your story is that you're too busy with your work. That's going on, and it's not that you're not involving into the family life. How is it? Can you explain me more what's happening from your side so that we understand? Yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah, so I, I mean, I am just uh, just more involved in work. Um, I'm, I'm not home as much as I used to be. I, I am taking on extra projects. Like, um, you know, last weekend, <clears throat> I ended up uh, going on a trip with my boss who went um, away. There was a big conference. Um, a lot of important businesses in the area were there. So, you know, I wanted to do some networking and try to build, I'm just, I wanna build my career. Um, I just feel like that's really important for me right now. Okay, so the way, uh, the words which I'm hearing a lot is build your career, you being busy. Mm -hmm. You're not able to involve into too much of household things and get involved with Jack. And the words, what I'm hearing from you, Jack, is um, uh, less involvement of Anna and not giving that attention and love. Does that mean you're just talking about the involvement in terms of getting things done? Or are you looking something more beyond that in a relationship such as love, affection? Those parts, are those missing or it's just those are her involving into a household goals? Yeah, those are also missing. Those are also missing. So I'm just trying to understand that what problem is affecting your relationship, right? 
so that you guys are now thinking, especially Jack is thinking about separation. So what do you think, what is that problem that is affecting your relationship and getting you apart from each other? Could you name that problem or first, if you can just come with some problem and then we can name it so we can focus that problem. I just, I, I feel like, you know, since, since we got the house, everything has just been going so fast. Like, you know, we just started, um, you know, doing the remodeling and, and it's, uh, you, you know, it's just like, you know, it's a 30 year mortgage and it's just like so, so much is happening so, so that, fast. That's according to plan. <laughs> this is what we plan to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, it is, it is what we plan. Um, it's just, it's just, I, it seems like everything is just like happening so fast. Okay, so it was planned that you are going to buy a house and you're going to take a mortgage, but still you feel that that is not the right thing at this time? No, um, I mean, it is, it is what, it's what we, we've always wanted. Um, you know, it's like the white picket fence, you know, it's just kind of, um, it's always been our dream to buy a house and remodel it, like exactly how we want. We're really into like interior design and fixing stuff up. So um, a, a lot about that and, uh, you know, kids and, you know, it, it was always the plan, it's just like, it's just, it's just everything seems to be just like speeding up and moving really quickly. And I just, I just, I don't know what the, I don't know why we're in such a rush, you know? Why are we in a rush to finish the house? And I don't, I don't, yeah. So, okay, you're still confused. You don't know what exactly is happening, which is not allowing you to get involved with Jack. Do you think that, uh, are you clear that is it because of your mortgage, your, uh, job commitment or maybe things are moving too fast. So what do you think is affecting your relationship with Jack today? Um, it, it's hard to put my finger on it. Um, I don't it, like that this it's what we always wanted but now that it's happening I just like um, I guess I'm just scared everything's just gonna like disappear. Scared of what? What will disappear? Everything. Like, you know, we, we've worked so hard for the house and to build up our careers and... Um, it doesn't make any sense to me. So what I'm, I'm listening that you have fear that you will lose your marriage, your job. Is that kind of fear you're having? Uh, I guess, yeah. I, I, I just, um, yeah, I guess I'm just afraid everything's just gonna change or, or go away. The way you're sharing your, ex uh, your thoughts and your uh, experience, it seems that you want to be into this relationship. You want this relationship to work. That's your story, but yeah. whatever the problems are, we need to solve those problems, but you want to be in this relationship. Yes. Jack, I want to understand from you that, do you feel that once you're able to work with these problems, you'll be able to work this marriage and move forward? I mean, I think, honestly, I want it to work. We've been together for so long, so. Yeah, that's great that you both have that positive thing that you can work out. Now, we need to work and understand what is that problem that is affecting your relationship. Mm -hmm. So we need to narrow down and come that what you think is not allowing you to be together. And I was just reading your little bit information that you got married before seven years, right? So what was so, great about that time when you didn't have the similar problem, right? So what was it? And that you have present today that is entering a relationship and not allowing you the way you were living before seven years or at the time of your marriage? To, to me, it seems like um, everything was so great when it was like, like a plan, you know, when, when we, it was like, when we had goals and you know when we were working towards those things and now that they're here it's almost like now now what so you know? what goals you had at that time that was working and that was effective at that time and there was no problem in your relationship let us just go back over there and understand what was your goal at that time 
the goal is to get the house, to fix up the house, have kids, um, you know, be successful in our jobs, and um, you know, so we're kind of like already halfway there. Okay, so you mentioned house, job, kids. Uh -huh. uh, so as per my understanding, you got your house, mm -hmm. you already have a job. Mm -hmm. So what's missing? Um, kids? Um, yeah, I just, that, that just seems like really uh, fast. It just seems like too soon. Uh, it's like such a big commitment to bring kids into the world. Like it's a huge thing and I just want to make sure um, that we're ready for that. And I just, uh, um, I think it's just too soon. What do you have to say? Jay? Well, I, this is the time now. I mean, we've got the house, everything's settled. Part of the plan so so do you think that not having kids is a problem right now or just committing to something new is a problem for you right now for me both of you oh. well i know that for me the problem is just the fact that she's gone all the time you know she's rarely home you know as i stated before she doesn't come home to help cook out or, you know we don't we're not doing repairs we don't spend any time like we used to and so she's always gone. She's always going off with her boss to go to some trip or whatever. So I just like, I, I don't know. Okay, uh, and I've been listening from Jack a lot that he's missing you a lot. He's missing that time where you were together, spending time together. I think that that is missing somewhere. Do you think the same problem? Do you think that intimacy, that love, that spending time together, you guys are missing that? Yeah, um, I agree that it has been different lately. Okay, yeah. so you both agree that, that that intimacy or that love is missing. So what would you say in your relationship if you need to name this problem, that something is missing, what would you name that? What is missing right now? Unity. Okay, so yeah, unity. Makes sense. So you seem that unity is missing, which was there in past, but now unity is not there between you, and it's creating a problem between you, and it's drifting you and not allowing you to have an ideal relationship. Am I right? Okay. So what do you think? What, as a team, we can do so that your unity does not affect your relationship at this time? Well. Obviously, you know, coming home, you know, once in a while, that'd be nice. Yes? Um, yeah, I mean, I know the thing is, like, he's always wanting to work mm -hmm. on, the, on the house. Um, and I just don't, uh, I don't know, we're always, like, doing projects to fix up the house and stuff. It's just, like... No way we have to renovate the house. You know, we ha we're gonna have it for a long we're time. We have the gazebo next to the pool. Yeah, but we're gonna have the house for a long time. We don't need to do all of this right now. <clears throat> so I just want to take a step back for a moment. You know, you both shared a lot about the story. You know, your shared story, and there's some really interesting words that you both kind of use to describe kind of what's going on right now. And I just want to touch on those and kind of get get your opinion about that. So. Jake, you used a word called, di you said distance. Everything feels distant right now. Um, and you know, you described a lot about how, you know, um, Anna hasn't been home as much lately. Um, and then Anna, you used some interesting words. Um, you said rush, you said fear, you said scared. A lot of those words that, it seems like there might be a similar, could you maybe see where there might be a similar thread between those words? Um, and for example, you, you say, when you were talking about rush, what does it feel like? What does rush feel like to you? Uh, it just feels like, it feels like I'm like running as fast as I can towards like a cliff. That's what it feels like. Okay, running towards a cliff. That's a real interesting way to describe it. Um, 
When you say you're running towards a cliff, do you have any idea what might be on the other side of that cliff? Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, everything ends up going away in time. Marriages and, and commitments and, and jobs, and, you know, everything just goes away in time. So when you, when you talk about the cliff, that's kind of what you think about. Things go away with time. It's a really powerful kind of image. Have you, has the cliff ever been in your life before? Uh, well, my uh, parents uh, had a really, really messy divorce um, when I was growing up, so. You know, I, I guess I guess things were good in the beginning of their marriage. I don't really remember much of that part. I just remember like my dad being gone all the time, and then when he'd come home, it's just like screaming at each other, and uh, and then you know that divorce was dragged out for years in the court system, and and then I, I was bouncing back and forth between houses, and you know it's just like. Um, yeah, I, I just, I learned from a young age that you can't rely on anything to last forever. How young were you? I was, the, well, they were fighting forever, but they finally divorced when I was 13. Um, and then it was the back and forth up until... Jake, did you, have you ever talked with Anna about any of this? No, I really never <clears throat> talked about it. No. What kind of, what, what do you think about the cliff? I think it's pretty scary. Mm -hmm. I can see it. Mm -hmm. I can definitely see that fear. Do you feel like maybe the cliff is causing some of that distance that you talked about? Yeah, I can see that. made an interesting statement when you talked about the cliff and about sharing your your family's story and I you know I commend you for sharing that it's very brave um, and hard to do um, you made a statement that your your dad when he would come home during during their divorce that there was a lot of you sense distance and fighting it sounds like do you see that maybe when you talk about that kind of reflecting on own relationship, do you see any similarities? Oh gosh, I hope not. <laughs> um, uh, I, we have been arguing more often, uh, but I mean, I, I don't think it's ever gotten to the point that, the, I mean, they were in each other's faces, calling each other names, screaming, I mean, I, we're not, we've never gotten to that point, but uh, I just don't want it to get to that point. Um, and I'm scared that it's going to. So I, when he talked about the separation, that like really freaked me out. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've talked a lot about the cliff and kind of about what's going on right now. I kind of want to hear a little bit of a different time, maybe a different, different story. Um, I'd like to hear about maybe when you first met. Where would you like to go first? <laughs> So, uh, we met back in college. Um, I used to, there was the coffee place I'd go to, and I'd go there regularly, and she was there. Eventually, started seeing patterns, and so I finally decided just to go sit down and, and talk to her, so. Okay, okay. And what, and what, did, what did you think about him coming over and talk with you? Um, I had noticed him as well. I didn't have the beard then either. <laughs> <laughs> I had noticed him as well. Um, I thought it was pretty bold that he came to talk to me. So um, I, I let him talk and uh, he asked me on a date and I, I really liked talking to him. Um, we had a lot in common. We had like a lot of the same interests and, and that kind of thing. So. Um, you know, he asked me on a date, and kind of just went from there. And a year later, we were married. Oh wow! Okay, great. 
so that so hearing your story, that hearing that story about you know the bold going forward and and kind of making that, that move to talk to her. It was interesting. You used some words. Um, you talked about like you had a plan, and then you got married, and you know, before or earlier in our conversation, you talked about the plan. You talked about you know buying the house and and uh, having kids, and I, I get the sense that would you say when I start talking about that that you kind of is the cliff? Do you feel the cliff kind of in? Okay. So I want to kind of try to steer away from the cliff right now. I kind of want to just focus on learning, you know, as much as I can about what that relationship was like at the beginning. So if, if we could go back, or let's say we could, if, let's say your relationship was in the room with us right now. Let's say there was a third chair right there. This is your relationship. Okay, and I asked your relationship what it was like when you first met. The beginning, what was the beginning like? What do you think your relationship would say? What do you think it would say about itself, like like us? Yes. Um, How would it describe you? Harmonized. Yeah. Per I was gonna say perfect. 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 Perfect harmony. Mm -hmm. Okay. We kind of talked about unity earlier, so perfect harmony. Okay. Okay. So I've got something I want to try. Um, this might seem a little strange, but we're gonna let's try, okay? Um, if that's okay with you. So let's think about, let's maybe think about your life story a little bit. And if we were to write your life story, and we maybe gave it some chapters, how many chapters would you say, not your life story, your relationship story, how many chapters would your relationship story have, you think? If that's not very clear, let me know. I can try to expand on it a little more. So like, when we were dating, Quite a few. There's nine, so I don't know if we'll be able to get through all nine. No, let's say no. Let's say when we were dating, okay. and then at the beginning of our marriage, and then when we bought the house, and then now. This is four big chapters. Yeah. Bought a house, and now it's chapter one. We're dating. So what does what would you title that? Would you just call it dating, or would there be another term? You And let's say, I'm interested in, in chapter two, but I'm going to skip to chapter three. Bought, bought the house. What, what would we call chapter three? I, I would say the beginning. Beginning. Hmm. Anna? I would say big commitment. Big commitment. Okay. And if we had to title chapter four. What would we call that? What would we call now? I would just have a giant question mark. Question mark. Um, yeah. I, I would say this point has probably been the worst point in our relationship so far. So The rough patch. The rough patch. So, if we were to ask your relationship that's sitting in the room with us right now, what would you, what could, what could Anna and Jake do to get through the rough patch, to start chapter five? What do you think they would say? that it would tell me to stop being so scared but that's easier said than done okay. I would probably say just to trust so I know we're coming towards the end of our session now and I don't want to leave it on on a note where, where the cliff where we're looking at that cliff okay so I know you've come to me for help 
because I think there's somebody else that can help you. Um, and I think that person is seated here in our imaginary third chair. So what I'm going to do in between now and our next session is I'm going to write a letter to your relationship. And I'm going to have to deliver the letter to both of you. Um, but you know, I want you to—I would like both of you, maybe if it's okay with you, to read that letter to your relationship. Um, and then maybe start thinking about if there's a way that we can write chapter five. Does that sound like something we can do? Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Great. Well, I look forward to seeing you next session. Okay. Cut to the next session. <laughs> Jake, hi Anna. So, how did it go with reading the letter to your relationship? It was a little weird at first. Um, kind of heavy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was kind of hard. To, it was weird to talk about it like a, another thing and not just us. But it it was good, I think. At least we got it got us to talk. Yes, probably the most we've done in a while. Okay. And did it give you any new ideas for how you want to approach or move forward a little bit with how you want to deal with your relationship? steps when we bought the house we're fixing it up this was part of our plan this was part of our dream to get to this point and just to trust that process well, wasn't that what was bringing the cliff into view though I mean I would say it was it's our, not my cliff my parents did all that stuff too my parents had a house kids <laughs> but, but we're not them Let's step back for a minute. Just for a minute. What if we compromise a little bit and look at that cliff in the relationship and what she was saying? That she needed to slow down and that she was being, being fearful. How does that make you feel? I mean, it's, it's still upsetting to realize that there's that fear. And you still want this relationship to work, right? I do, yeah. And you still want this relationship, yes. So, so what do we want to do to write a new chapter together for the next one? So, want to try to write the next chapter together maybe? I mean, yeah. You want to try that? Yeah. We could try to create a different plan a little, kind of tweak it. What do you think? Sure. Yeah. How do you think that could work? I'm just scared that the next chapter is going to be like kids, 
and we can wait. It's not. It's not like we have a, a deadline. It's not like we have a homework to do or anything like that. Anna, what would you ideally like to see? I. It's not that I don't want all of the same things that we've always wanted because I do want them. Mm -hmm. I'm just scared. Okay. And I don't and I don't know how to not be scared. Because mm -hmm. all all I've ever known is that, like it never works out and I just don't know how to but it's obvious that it, it's important to your husband. It's obvious it's important to you. What would be a more agreeable timeline? Um, five years. Is that not agreeable? Yeah, it's a long way away. That's, that's what we have to do. Is that more amenable? Is that doable? Is that unacceptable? It's acceptable. How does that make you feel? I just hope that in five years, um, I don't know. I have a hard time like looking at things. It's just hard to even, yeah, I, yeah, I, I think that it, it could, that could be a good time. Okay. Have you always lived with this fear? I, I guess, um, it just, it all became really real when we bought the house. Okay. Like it was always like a plan, goals, and then it just became really real. When was the time where you weren't living with that fear? When was it, when, would, when did that fear enter your life? I don't think it ever was a fear. I mean, as long as I can remember, my, probably when my parents got divorced. So before your parents got divorced, it was the time that you can remember when you were truly happy? When you were not fearful like this? Yeah, but I barely remember that. Wow, that's incredible. Jake, how do you feel hearing this? I mean, it definitely changes, you know, just the fact that she's had that for so long. Right. So it's something that we also need to so if you so when you feel that fear, let's say that fear is sitting here, what is that fear telling you? It's telling me to not get my hopes up. Um, everything's gonna fall apart eventually. Um, and why should we? You know, I don't. I just. I don't want to bring a kid into the world. It's just such a big commitment. Like, are we going to be able to give that kid a better life than, it's just, yeah, that kind of stuff. Is that what, is that what you want? That's not what you want though. You, you told me that your goal was to have a baby. And if you, if, if your fear was a person in this chair right now sitting next to you, what would you tell fear? Um, that we're supposed to go away. <laughs> I'm frustrated and <laughs> I would just tell it to get the hell out. <laughs> right. So that's what you want. You want your fear to stop. Yeah. Okay. That's wonderful. Okay. So Okay, hold. <laughs> Can I grab a chair? Yeah. Yes. Yeah.
Wait, here you go. Thank you. We'll just roll back. Back to the cliff with me. Are you the patient now? Hmm? Are you the patient now? No. Oh, okay. No, <laughs> no but I'm going to help. I'm going to help. Okay. 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 So let's go back to the cliff. So I, I, I think that we were we were just talking about about fear, right? Before when we were talking about fear, you know, we we named that as the cliff during our last session and um, you know I would over between sessions we talked about writing that letter right to your relationship and, and talking about perfect harmony which is what you felt you described you felt earlier in your relationship but the cliff it sounds like from your story that it just keeps rearing its you know rearing its head and it keeps coming back and it's hard for you would you say it's hard for you to see beyond the cliff I can't, I mean, I can't see beyond it. And it's like every, every time that we make a big step, like, you know, we buying the house, that was like, I mean, the marriage, yeah, there, it was there a little bit, but then every step past that, it's just like, we're getting closer and closer. There's a, there's a movie, I'm, I'm sure you've probably seen it, the Shining. And there's that scene in the beginning where they're driving along the mountains to get up to the to the to the manor. Would you? There, that that road is very very thin, like pencil thin. Only one car can drive across that road. Do you kind of feel like that's the track that you're? Yeah. Yeah. Like the wrong turn. Yeah, like one wrong move and everything just like tumbles away. So Jake, how, how does it feel to you hearing Anna describe this experience? Because you, you mentioned that you didn't understand this. You didn't know that this is what was going on. What, what are your feelings about it now as you hear her describing it this fear? It, it kind of hurts, you know? Because, uh, you know, you, you go along thinking everything's fine, and, and then as time goes on, it's like it's like a a hole shaped heart you know it just kind of disappears and fades away so yeah it hurts it hurts you mm -hmm. personally as her husband mm -hmm. I want to do something a little odd if you guys are up to it so we talked about you know this cliff and the cliff coming into view, the cliff re-entering your life, because you said you've, you kind of had it in your life for as long as you can remember. It was always there in the distance. From what I hear, it's front and center right now. So what, what does the cliff tell you about your marriage? To Jake. It's not going to last. Everything's going to turn to crap and it's not going to last. And when you hear that, I mean, I, <coughs> you know, I just feel this doubt. You know, it kind of, kind of seems like that's how she always felt. So then why did we, why'd she take the steps to get to this point? You want to ask that? So why did we start? It's, it's not like it was always there. It was always like a little doubt in the back of my mind. Like, you know, maybe this couldn't work. Maybe this couldn't work. And like, you know, everyone, everyone has, you know, People get divorced, it's coming. You know, everyone has that, like, back of their head, I hope this works out, but as everything's, like, happening, it's just, like, it seems more final. It, it, it seems 
like inevitable. Can I help out by reminding you? You talked also about something else, and you both agreed on it. You said that in the beginning of your relationship that ultimately led to your decision to get married, which sort of speaks to your question, doesn't it? What did you say that was? And you kind of said that together, didn't you? What did Perfect Harmony tell you about your marriage to Jake? That things were going to be different. That, that he was different. form of it. Mm. You were in lockstep together. Do you remember that feeling? Mm -hmm. So somehow what perfect harmony was saying started to get drowned out. And as things became, the term you used was more real, the voice of the cliff got louder. Sounds like perfect harmony's been drowned out a bit. Is that how it feels, how it seems? Definitely. So when you hear Anna talking about the cliff just sort of looming and coming up, it feels hurtful to you, it feels personal. How do you think it feels to her? Well, I'm sure it feels just as bad, if not worse. Do you think that this is something that maybe you might have some ability to help her with? I do. How do you think you could possibly help her with that? I mean, I suppose I could step back and just try to be more understanding. Um, Cliffs, this sounds pretty yeah. powerful, though. I mean, it sounds pretty active. Well, I mean, it's not like you're climbing this cliff by yourself. I mean, you're kind of climbing it together, I guess. Yeah. I just... I just don't want you to think that it has anything to do with you because it, it doesn't and I I love you and care about you. It's just like it's always like this doubt. It's pretty tricky. Because you had, you know, perfect harmony in here. What kind of things did perfect harmony tell you about Jake? that he was the best, that I was never going to find another guy quite like him, and that he's the one. So how did the cliff trick you into thinking that Jake is not the one, Jake is not terrific? It just reminded me of my parents. How? In what way? What did it say? It told me that everything was going to end up like that. With the screaming and the arguing and the kids involved and court. It always ends like that. What did Perfect Harmony tell you about Anna? Just things made sense. Um, like this was it. Nothing else really mattered. It was the 
this focus. Wow. And how do you feel like the cliff has been impacting you? It's, it seems more like an obstacle, just something that we have to overcome in some way. It's been more frustrating than, than anything else. It's and hurtful. Yeah. I mean, you express deep hurt that this was sort of, you don't trust me? Is that mm -hmm. kind of what I was hearing? Yeah, you didn't use the word, but that's it, how it sounded. Yeah, it's, it just feels like, you know, that it, you're kind of being left, you know, strung along, you know, and like, oh, well, you're just like anybody else. You're just like my, you know, it's. Just like my what? Like my dad. In your whole life, did you ever have a situation that you kind of knew in your head, you know, that maybe it wasn't how you were feeling, but, but you had fearfulness or you had some other kind of paralyzing emotion? Can you think of any time in your life when you might have had a situation where yeah. rationally you knew, like, positive, look. Positive or negative? Something that maybe stood in your way and was an obstacle. I would definitely say asking her out was was very hard, very difficult. And you would get, you know, you kind of had some messages going on about making that difficult, making, you know, le leading to that being a difficult decision. What, what were you, what were those messages that you were being given? That it was not worth it, we should move on. It's not going to go anywhere. So, what were the counter messages that got you up out of your seat, walking over to her table, sitting down, and doing that bold move? What do I have to lose? I mean, that was the message. What do I have to lose? Might as well try. Might as well try. When you were feeling the, the kind of the fearfulness and the obstacle, was it hard? Very, very, very hard. So you have some, might not be the same magnitude as a cliff, but do you have some idea of maybe what's going on with Anna? Yeah, I'm seeing that now. <laughs> so I, it sounds it sounds like you have an idea of, of what it of what it feels like to kind of to face a cliff, yeah. something that you know makes you feel a certain way. You don't have you necessarily have control over how that makes you feel. And how does it make you feel to hear Jake kind of recognize what you're dealing with? I'm glad that he beginning to understand that it's not about him at all <laughs> and you know if it was someone else it, if I had married someone else it would probably be worse because he's he's great so there are those thoughts to counter it but it's it's just so there and I'm just glad that he acknowledges that it's not it's not that I don't love him or that I don't trust him or anything it sounds like you guys have recognized some, some traits in each other that maybe can help you move through this together. Um, and maybe we can make that, that voice, you know, the, the big cliff, maybe we can start to, to raise the voice of, of perfect harmony. Is there any way that, that either of you think that we could do that? Um, well, we used to always go to coffee shops. That was our thing. Um, and we just haven't really, you know, I haven't really made the time to do that recently. Um, so we could try to do those yeah. again. 
Okay, when you go to that coffee shop that you're planning on going to, look around and see if you can find some evidence, something there that reminds you of that perfect harmony. Think you could do that and maybe come back to our next session? Do you think you might go to the coffee shop before next week? Yeah. Yeah. Terrific. So if you go in there, look around, and I don't, I don't know what it's going to be, something that you'll know. There'll be things there that are just going to sort of go like that, remind you of whatever the messages are. When Perfect Harmony said, hey, what have you got to lose? Go for it. When Perfect Harmony said, well, you're not going to find better than him. Look around and find some reminders, some evidence of that message, those messages from Perfect Harmony. Make note of them. And you can tell each other, but I'd appreciate it if you could keep me in the loop and maybe share that. Do you think that might be something you would uh, be willing to do and come back with? Yeah. Yeah, I think that would be, I'd, I'd be really interested because I'm telling you, that voice is all over the place. And if that's one of your places, it's going to be there. I'm just really interested to know what it's going to be.